things to consider before you buy or pass on a product. type 4 hair and what a real, real wash regimen looks like. So I call this my buy or pass series and, sorry I have my notes, I always have notes because I always get my thoughts all scrambled. But anyway, and what I'm doing here today is I break down the ingredients in a product's formula. You only need to look at the first five ingredients on the ingredients label located on the back of the product. Those are the ingredients that are intended to do the work of the product. Now this information is based on cosmetic chemists. They are the ones that create the formulas for manufacturers. So in the US, it is required by the Federal Drug Administration to have an ingredients label on the product listing the ingredients in order of concentration from highest to lowest. The number one ingredient 99% of the time is water, which will take up from 50 to 80% of the concentration in that product's formula. And then from there, it will go in descending order, dropping significantly with the second ingredient listed on the ingredients label. Most likely there will be 10% or even 5% concentration of that second ingredient and then from there it just drops in descending order until the one percent at the one percent level the federal drug administration has indicated that those ingredients can be listed in any order in the products formula so to decipher what an ingredient does it will help you understand the purpose of the ingredient what ingredients work together well, and if a particular ingredient is even needed in a product. Because an ingredient can be added to the formula just to make the claim the ingredient is in the product. And what those ingredients are, are marketing ingredients. Brands will highlight certain ingredients on the front label, but if they are not within the first five ingredients on the ingredients label, then they are not doing the work of the product. This is called the kitchen sink syndrome. Whereas ingredients are added to a product's formula only to lure consumers to buy the product. As a consumer, you should know how to read an ingredients label and what these ingredients do in order to make smarter, better decisions which products to buy and which products to pass on. Okay. All right, so today the brand that I'm going to be breaking down the ingredients is a celebrity brand newly launched by the biggest pop star in the world. Her name is Rihanna, who doesn't know who she is, but just in case you don't, here's my short bio about her. Born in Barbados on February 20th, 1988, Rihanna, also known as Robin Rihanna Fenty, has become a globally recognized singer and business mogul. She has achieved remarkable success in the music industry, selling an estimated 250 million records worldwide, records worldwide and venturing into various business pursuits. In 2011, she established her own cosmetic empire with the fragrance Rebelle Fleur and later expanded into beauty and fashion with the creation of the Fenty brand. In 2017, Rihanna launched Fenty Beauty offering a diverse range of beauty products, including makeup, skincare, and most recently, a hair care line in 2024 and that is what I'm going to be reviewing today and there are several products but what I'm going to be reviewing is the shampoo there's two conditioners 
and I believe yeah, two conditioners and then some kind of repair treatment bond builder and the last is the defining cream so I'm just going to review these one two three four five products whether to buy or pass but before I get started with breaking down the ingredients in these products I want to show you celebrity brands they're no different than other brands of hair care products such as you know just a generic brand I don't know Cantu Shea Moisture things like that a lot of these brands they hire a company that has cosmetic chemists that will create the formulas for their particular brand and a celebrity is no different they meet with a company that the cosmetic chemist will take the information that they would like their product to be the smell the the consistency of it um, what they want to focus on feature but overall they are not developed in the lab by the celebrity they have someone who they hire will create the product using the ingredients that are available and they know work well together and then present that to the celebrity or client whoever it is and that client will then approve whether to manufacture that product or not so this is no different for a celebrity brand especially for a celebrity brand because you have to have a scientific background in order to properly formulate a product so that it works to do what it's supposed to do if a shampoo is supposed to clean your hair then you're gonna have to have particular ingredients in that products formula in order for it to clean your hair if you're producing a conditioner you're gonna have to have certain ingredients that are intended to condition moisturize your hair whether you want it to have better slip whether you want it to create a curl pattern, whether you want it to be a light conditioner or a heavy conditioner. So there's a lot of scientific um, qualifications that are required for you to make these products. So what I'm doing on my end is I am showing you guys what are the ingredients in the product's formula and what is doing the work of that product and what ingredients are there for marketing purposes and marketing purposes mean that those ingredients are not doing the work of the product but are there to attract a consumer to potentially buy the product so when it comes to Fenty Rihanna's brand has tried to make itself be different from other brands and what they have focused on for a marketing claim is that they're introducing a new concept when it comes to caring for your hair. We've got a really special proprietary complex in all of our products that I'm so proud of. It's called Replenicore 5, and it's clinically tested to repair, strengthen, hydrate, smooth, and protect. We know scalp health is at the root of healthy hair so we made sure this complex also included built-in scalp care and conditioning every time you use Fenty hair you're repairing what <laughs> and she calls it replenicore dash five okay so that is it what she is saying in that short video on her website is basically nothing because when it comes to those key words, that is what you want from any product that you apply to your hair. Being strengthen, hydrate, smooth, and protect at every step. These are words that are very enticing to a consumer, enticing to someone to buy your product. So I'm not faulting her at all for using these words, but they are just common words that you would expect your products that you use for your hair to do so that is a marketing phrase and so if you look at what Replenicore 5 is 
just go to their website and search to see what do they mean by that because I actually googled the word and in googling the word the only things that came up were the launch of Rihanna's hair care line Fenty so it is a new word that I believe her marketing team created in order to set it different from other hair care lines and that is completely fine but I want you to be aware of just separating what is marketing claims and what is doing the work of the product anyway with that said I'm going to show you on her website how Replenicor-5 is described. Here is the definition on the website about what Replenicor-5 is. And it says here Fenty's Hairs Propriety Complex Replenicor-5 is clinically developed using five key ingredients, amino acids, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, Barbados gooseberry, upcycled jackfruit extract, and green tea extract to repair, strengthen, hydrate, smooth, and protect hair. The need for this unique technology arose from our founder, Rihanna's love for experimentation through hair colors and styles. If you want to read the rest, you can go ahead and read it because breaking it down from that, Basically, she's just applying a new word to ingredients that are commonly used in hair care products, being amino acids, usually those are like proteins to strengthen the hair, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, very common ingredient across the board in hair care products, and in just cosmetic products, beauty products, period the Barbados gooseberry, the upcycle jackfruit extract, and the green tea extract. When it comes to extracts, I will be mentioning in this video why those particular type of ingredients are not considered ingredients that are doing the work of the product. And this is based on cosmetic chemists giving us a guideline as to what is doing the work of the product and what ingredients are there for luring a customer to buy the product and it's considered just a marketing ingredient. With that said, this is her brand's way of trying to make their brand different from other brands because you have to have some type of marketing angle to stand out from the rest of other brands and that is what it is for this brand, this Replenicor-5. Now, with that said, what we're looking at is, does it really have an impact on what these different products under her brand do? Because she does mention five different ingredients as part of the key ingredients in this Replenicor-5. So what we want to see is if those particular ingredients are the key ingredients in each one of these products that she is offering. The shampoos, the conditioners, the repair products. And the way to go about determining that is look at the ingredients label, look at the first five ingredients in that product's formula, and you will see they're doing the work or not. So let's get started with the shampoo. The shampoo is called the Rich One Moisture Repair Shampoo. The cost is $29 for 10 ounces and that's pretty expensive for a shampoo. So let's go through the ingredients in the shampoo. If you look at the ingredients label Mind you, I have not bought these products. You can go simply online and you will find somewhere the ingredients label. In this case, I've gone to FentyBeauty.com. That's Rihanna's website for all her products, all her cosmetic products. She has makeup, skincare, fragrance. So I've gone to the website. 
clicked on hair and once click on hair click on shampoo you scroll down you see that the name of it is the rich one moisture repair shampoo price is $29 for 10 ounces And then if you scroll down, it'll give you a description of what shampoo is intended to do. In this case, the shampoo gently cleanses, flexes its plush, moisturizing lather, making something so everyday feel so extra. Replenicore-5's proteins, amino acids, and antioxidants help to repair split ends and reduce breakage. It's also moisturizing yet lightweight, so all hair types can get rich, not weighed down. First thing you need to do in your head is what is the objective of the product? In this case, it is a shampoo. A shampoo is intended to clean your hair, i.e. remove dirt, product buildup, and oil. When it removes oil, it's removing good oil and bad oil. There's natural oil that we secrete from our scalp, but that is something that does not run down our hair strands if you have 4C hair because our hair is so curly. But either way, the application of oils that we put on our hair to create a film around our hair, that is removed as well. So we're just simply looking to clean our hair when we use the shampoo. So you want ingredients in the product formula that are intended to clean your hair. So if you go down the list, you'll next see ingredients. And with ingredients, it has two photos giving you description of certain key words that they are making the impact to what the product, in this case, a shampoo does. So they're featuring the Replenicore-5, and they're also then talking about the fragrance, warm, ambery, floral scent. That is a fragrance that does not clean your hair, so keep that in mind. You might buy this shampoo because you like the smell of the shampoo, but that fragrance does not clean your hair. So, moving on down, to find the ingredients label, you have to click on see full ingredients. And that's where you will find the complete ingredients label listing all the ingredients in this shampoo's formula from the highest concentration to the lowest concentration. And if you look at this ingredients label, you will see that it is a lot of ingredients in this product's formula but we're only needing to look at the first five ingredients and within those first five ingredients you will see what is doing the work of this product so in this case the first five ingredients are water two is sodium cocal isothionate three is sodium laurel methyl isothionate four is laurel glucoside and five is dystereth-75 from here i'm going to tell you what these ingredients are doing in the product's formula every one of these ingredients that i've just stated they are very common ingredients across the board in different brands of shampoos so starting with water water is a solvent it is there intended to break down the ingredients and create a nice texture and water takes up the most concentration in a product it takes up from 50 to 80 percent of the concentration in a product's formula the second ingredient listed on this ingredients label is the sodium cocoa isothionate that is a surfactant a surfactant is a type of ingredient that lift the dirt up off your hair strands and from there allow the water to rinse it off your hair. This is the primary surfactant in this product's formula. 
And in this case, the functions is cleaning your hair as well as creating a foam. This ingredient is very common across the board in many shampoos. Number three ingredient listed on the ingredients label is the sodium laurel methyl isothionate. That is a very mild cleansing agent. It produces foam common in body washes and facial cleansers. The number four ingredient listed on this label is the laurel glucoside. It's another mild cleansing agent. It gives moderate to high amount of foam. If you notice when I stated what was the second ingredient in the shampoo, the sodium cocoa isothionate being the primary surfactant, according to cosmetic chemists, there are in a shampoo's formula a primary surfactant and then there are secondary surfactants which are also called co-surfactants. And the definition of a primary surfactant is it may be used alone or in combination with other surfactants to create a balanced and effective cleansing formula. The choice of the co-surfactants depends on the desired properties of the shampoo, such as its lather, cleansing ability, and mildness. Now the definition for secondary surfactants is, also known as a co-surfactant, are added to shampoos to complement the primary surfactants, enhance the product's overall performance, and improve specific properties such as mildness, conditioning, foaming, or viscosity. They help create a more balanced and effective shampoo. The secondary surfactant is commonly used to reduce the drying effect of the primary surfactant and modify the aesthetic properties of the shampoo. So when it comes to foam, all these thoughts. So now let's rinse it out. Oh, oh. According to cosmetic chemists, ingredients that create a foam in a shampoo's formula because that is what a consumer is expecting when they clean their hair. They want to see the foam. A cosmetic chemist said here, consumers equate foaming with cleansing and believe that unless there is a lot of foam generated, their hair will not be clean. All shampoos, even the low foaming Baby shampoos contain more than enough surfactant to clean the grimiest, dirtiest hair. With the ingredients that create a foam, the concentration of that in a product's formula is 1 to 2 percent. The number five listed ingredient is the Dysterith-75. That is viscosity controlling. What is viscosity? Official name for thickeners. Viscosity controls how thick or thin the fluid is and how the fluid flows. Product can be runny like water or thick like cream with no flow or in between like a lotion. So in the case of the shampoo, the Rich One Moisture Repair Shampoo, I would not buy it. It's a good solid basic shampoo but you do not need to spend $29 to clean your hair. You can find a shampoo that is much cheaper that has the same objective of cleaning your hair. Because once you clean your hair, you still need to moisturize it. That is more important to follow a cleansing of your hair and scalp with a conditioner to moisturize your hair and prevent dryness and your hair breaking off. So with the shampoo, just go with a good solid shampoo that is cheap and then follow it up with a conditioner to moisturize your hair strands. So in this case, this would be a pass for me. All right, so that is it for the shampoo.